Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Providence. Good to see everybody this morning. We're glad you have joined us for worship. Just a couple quick announcements and then we'll begin that worship. Um, at the close of this service, we're going to have lunch upstairs. Our Christmas luncheon is uh, to follow this service, so please join us. And then following that, we're going to have a pastor deacons meeting uh, downstairs in the um, pastor's room. Wednesday, we'll have our normal scheduled events. But at 7 o'clock, after our prayer and Bible study, we're going to have our quarterly church conference. And then our homebound member is Miss Lou Jean Wall. There's Miss Lou Jean's address and her phone number. You can call or send her a card. Uh, but most importantly, we keep our homebound in our prayers. There's a couple of announcements there. Uh, I mean, dates to take note of and our church contact information. If you need either Pastor Don or Pastor Sean, the... Uh, Information is there, or if you need Miss Linda, and then on the back is our pastor's pen. If you would, if you would take a moment to read that. Are there any other announcements I may have missed? If none, let's pray, and we'll begin our service. Father, we do thank you for a wonderful, a wonderful morning to come out to uh, to study your word in Sunday school. But most importantly, Lord, we set this time aside to worship you and as we worship you in song and in praise father we we just pray that it is heartfelt you take center stage in our worship may our minds be focused on uh, what we're what we are thankful for as during our praise and father as we open your word um, we are most thankful that you have revealed yourself and uh, to your creation and we thank you and praise you for that now father we just pray that it as this service moves forward, that our, that our minds are clear, our hearts are ready. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Please stand with me. Number 361. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. 361.
today with thankful hearts that we can worship you. May the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and your grace. The message is in song. I pray today would help prepare our hearts for the ministering of your word. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, to prepare us and to lead us so that, Father, when we come to the Scriptures, that we would be receptive, here with understanding. And, Father, that we would welcome your word for our hearts, for our church. And, Lord, we just thank you again for the privilege that we have a time to unite together in corporate prayer, sing the hymns of the faith, and I pray that it would lead to worship you and giving you all the praise and adoration. Thank you for every home represented in this place today. May they be favored with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, congregation, you're standing, so you might as well remember. Let's do, O come all ye faithful. Number 89. Oh! 
talked to the pastor earlier in the week. Um, I said, you know, I don't really have a Christmas song. But this morning I have a Christmas word, I believe. Um, the Lord has really spoken to me about gifts and giving. And how many times um, we think too much like the world. You know, what can I get this person? I gotta run here, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And it just hit me, you know, I gave you the greatest gift, I gave you my son. And he also, I felt, reminded me that, and then my son gave his life for you. What better gift could we have than to focus on Jesus during this holiday season and to give ourselves for his work? It's a great song to me. It reminds me that better days are ahead. I, you know, I know many people, and they don't, they don't really like Christmas. Maybe it's heartache, maybe it's financial. Um, just struggle with it. But to me, the message I can give them is that you know, better days ahead. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. And it's going to be awesome. It's a great song, it's Beulah Land.
today we're looking in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 30 through 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor, grace, with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. When I look at this passage of Scripture and many of the words in this text, I see where the power of the highest overshadowed the womb of the lowly Mary. And it truly must have been a manifestation of His compassion and His gentle touch of the mightiest of God. Mary could have said like King David when the Lord blessed him and helped him and ministered to him. He gave a salutation in 2 Samuel chapter 2. He said, Thy gentleness hath made me great. Another translation says, You have given me your protection and salvation. And another translation says, Your work has helped me and exalted me with victory. And so when you think of that with Mary, I'm reminded and to say to us today, without giving disrespect, but not as much respect perhaps as some would give, or recognition, but Mary needed a Savior. Amen. The Bible says there, in, in, right after our text, beginning in that 39th verse. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. So please note, it did not speak of Mary and say, Blessed are you above women, but said among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You see, I remind you today that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have the sin nature of the seed of Adam. Now let's make it perfectly clear that the seed of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 
The seed that was planted in uh, Mary's womb was sinless. So we have a holy and a righteous Son of God. The only one that could have satisfied the holiness of God and the righteousness of God. And so just as David had proclaimed, giving thanks for his help from the Lord God, Mary also needed a Savior. The world needs a Savior, and you and I need a Savior. And uh, that's their spiritual context in this passage of Scripture. I don't want you to miss the spiritual activity, what's taking place. And if David and if Mary could give praise to the Lord, may we for what salvation He has brought to our souls. Yeah, I look through Scripture and I see pictures of, of these things. And one of those is in Genesis chapter 1 when the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved. The Spirit of God overshadowed it. Like, it, like Mary's womb. And the Spirit of God, like when, when we came to know Jesus as our personal Savior, the work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And that, there's a picture of that light of John chapter 1, the light of the world. God saw the light that it was good. In fact, that, that light, the Lord said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And he took that light and divided the light from the darkness. And, call, and God called the light day. Paul gives us a, a spiritual application when he talks about the creation of what God has done for us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So as David and as Mary and uh, as Paul and as the world and of us today, somewhere give Him praise. And at least in your heart, give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give Him, give him honor. The Savior of our souls. And, and don't miss that in the text. Looking at that text, the Bible says, in uh, beginning in that 30th verse again, and here's the work of the Lord. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor. She found grace from the Lord. And uh, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Aren't you glad for the grace of God Amen. that we have received uh, conceived in our hearts the infallible seed of the Word of God and that God has come into us by His Holy Spirit and we're give, we are, are giving birth in testimony and witness to the glory of God and to the work of the Lord and what He has done. And this is all taking place as it was with Mary. The picture, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob. And so the, ap the lesson, the application of the text, that Mary found grace. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. And grace is something that we're not worthy of. Grace cannot be purchased. Because the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. And because we all have that sinful nature, then the only thing that we can purchase is the second death. The only thing that we uh, can give all of our works and attention to would be things that would not give to us eternal life. But I'm thankful that Mary has received grace of God, which is a picture that we might see in the literal birth of the Son of God, that you and I in spiritually receiving the Lord stop today once again and recognize this is not anything that we can work for and purchase. And, and we, may, we may think we can, and that's why so many people say I'm doing the best I can. 
I hope I make it. I'm trying to get to heaven. Well, if you want Christ to live in your heart, if you want the Lord to control your life, if you want Jesus into your soul, then you need to put your trust and your faith not in our, our labors, but in His labor alone. When this was told to Mary in giving the birth to the Christ child, Mary asked a question there in that 34th verse, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? I, I, I'm a young woman. I do not know a man. And uh, how can this be? This supernatural thing. And the Lord said to her, uh, in, as He said to Nicodemus over there in John chapter 3, you remember Nicodemus came to the Lord uh, by night, a ruler of the Jews, he came by night. He didn't come during the invitation of him. Just, just thought about that. And uh, he came at whatever time that he responded. He calls out to the Lord. The Lord will meet you at any place or any time. And uh, he came to Jesus by night. And he asked that question after Jesus said to him. said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And so Nicodemus asked the question, how can a man be born when he is old? And uh, how can these things be? And in fact, Jesus said to him, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so such the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believe, I'm so glad today that I know what to believe, to believe in his death, burial, and his resurrection, and I'm glad that that salvation is offered to Jew and Gentile alike, is offered to anyone, and that love that He, he gave forth the, the message of in John 3.16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so I'm thankful. I know how these things could be and uh, how it can be for us today in trusting the Lord. Because here's Jesus' answer. Jesus said in verse 35 of our text, He said in verse 35, even as the angel spake, answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Now this is the work uh, supernaturally, spiritually of what God does for you and I. When we receive His Word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. As Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, when we hear it, and we trust it, and we believe it, and we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, it's always God's Word, it's always the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And even as it was here in our text, the angel answered and said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Thank God that we have the, the Word of God. Romans 1.16, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the Gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. And thank God we have the working of the Holy Spirit that can still move upon hearts. What God did for King David and what He did for Mary and what He's offering, what He gave to Paul and what He gives to us and the world today is that this, wouldn't this be a wonderful Christmas? to have the Holy Spirit of God overshadow you and just move upon your heart because you've heard the Word and trusted it and believed it and, uh, and received Him and be saved. That's the mighty work. And the application from there to what this holy thing as it was spoken with Mary, look at verse 36, 37, and 38. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I've had folks say to me through the years, Preacher, you don't know how bad I've been. You don't know the things that I've done. You don't know my life. And I'm glad that when God decided to send His only begotten Son after measuring the need of man, realizing the only hope that man had 
to lift him up out of the pit of sin and degradation. That there must be a Savior. There must be a power of His Word. There must be the working of the Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful today that that Holy Spirit has worked and is working still and souls can be saved. I'm grateful for that and that I could say to anyone that I'm witnessing to or giving testimony to that with, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Is he, don't raise your hand. Anybody in the house think you're worthy to be saved? Anybody think you're good enough to be saved? Anybody think that uh, you could do something enough and, and give enough to be saved? No, you're wretched, you're vile. We're sinners that need to be saved by the grace of God. And when He looked at us in, in sin and He reached down His hand for me, thank God that He didn't say, I'm not able to do, handle this one. I can't save you. There's people that really believe that about themselves. They, they, they've just... You know, some, some folks brought up in the church all your life, coming out of a, a Christian home, and some folks might even have the idea sometimes that, well, somebody else is a worse sinner. You know, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as some folks. Every sin that has been committed has helped drive the nails in the hands of Jesus. And so just as we think of immorality and adultery and these things, we think also of lying and cheating and uh, gossiping and the, just go to Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3 and find the list but for with God nothing shall be impossible and Mary said behold the handmaiden be it unto me according to thy word I want you to do this work now it's an interesting thing when Elizabeth said that thing within you that holy thing and we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ living in us but I want, to, I want to tell you today, when I look at this text, I not only see the ministry and the work of salvation and the work of sanctification, I see the work for service. How God can use us. Uh, Paul talked about that work of the Lord. And in fact, he said it over in, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 16. He talked about how to reveal His Son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. And uh, Paul said that that, that that I need, that empowering of the Holy Spirit, I need to receive him. I need, to, I need Christ in me. I need his word in me. Why? That I might preach the gospel. Mary, that she might give forth this child and help rear this child, raise it, whichever the word's correct, that she might have the Christ child and, and I think Mary and Joseph had a great influence upon them. But, but what about our salvation? What about God has put His Holy Spirit in us to stir the gifts that He's given to us in us. And so when God gets a hold of something, with God nothing is impossible. When God saves us and puts His Spirit in, and stirs His gifts in us, that becomes a holy thing. That's a, you know, our labor, for, that's why it's important to be faithful. That's why it's important to yield. That's why it's important to submit ourselves. That's what Mary did just to give birth to the Christ child. This is a self-surrendering. This is, this is a, a glorifying uh, to the Son of God. And uh, it's, He is worthy. He's worthy today. In a few moments, we're going to sing a, a little chorus that says, Alleluia. Uh, which means also it's the same word, hallelujah. But hallelujah, praise the King, praise the Lord, praise unto Him. And today God wants to do a holy work with us and in us. And so to praise Him and to serve Him, it needs to begin with knowing Him as our personal Savior. I would not want to give a service without giving an invitation. And so the invitation today, if you're not saved, you're not sure of your salvation, you're not sure of uh, where you are with God, I, I invite you to think upon these scriptures. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. Paul gave us the gospel of salvation when he says, whosoever believeth, to believe in His death, burial, and His resurrection. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. 
It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So Romans 4, 5, come to the Lord without our works, but thankful for His work. So I thank Him from the promised seed of Genesis 3, 15 to the Savior being manifested, coming forth from the womb of, of, of Mary. And that seed, the printed, the given, the living Word of God placed in our hearts. So if you, please don't leave here today without giving me an opportunity to show you how to be saved. Would you stand please? Bow your heads in prayer as we make ready for the closing song. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this passage of Scripture. <laughs> the simplicity of it and yet the depths of it. What an awesome, awesome word that you have given to us from Genesis to Revelation. But Father, we thank you for these precious jewels and gems that we read. And as we read them over and over and through the years, thank you for the truths that you show to us as we grow in, in, in our faith and in our walk with you. I thank you, Father, for, for the word today. I pray it's found good soul. And it's our heart's desire, even as uh, others of old, others in our day have given praise to you. Father, in these next few moments, help us to sing this course unto you. Not sing about you, not sing to ourselves, not sing just to be singing. But Father, may this be a, a praise offering from our hearts to you. May we be like Mary when she broke open the alabaster box. And, uh, and the aroma filled the house. Father, may we uh, fill the house with, with your presence and your joy, and your peace and your love and your greatness. And not only in here, but when we leave these grounds this coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. Number 223. Hallelujah. 223.
We hope that you'll stay and eat with us today. We would like for you to. You're invited to. And Sean, when you come to give our closing prayer, give thanks for the meal, please. Pray with me. Father, we thank You for um, Your Son. The gift of Your Son, Lord. And I pray today and um, these coming weeks we could just be celebrating You. Celebrating the birth of You, Father. Please put that joy in our hearts. Help us to uh, realize the good news that is in Jesus. Um, but Father, we just thank You for today. And we thank You that we can gather and eat together and worship together, Lord. So please bless the food that we're about to eat and um, help us to just enjoy each other's company. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.